Hey, and welcome to Wild Seat. A youngster with his oversized backpack leaves his shanty and starts walking along the road towards a small forest with trees larger than a celebrity's ego. Upon arrival, he sees a huge sign, but he ignores it, like a toothache. While he curiously explores the area, a little butterfly lands on his finger, which triggers a strong memory of his father at a funeral. He continues to venture into the forest and comes across an odd-looking metal cabin. He cautiously approaches it, but is terrified to find a caged tiger. The boy darts off, grabs his backpack, and returns to the road where he waits for the school bus. Upon getting on, he realizes that the other kids are laughing at him. He heads for the back seats, but the bullies follow him, teasing him and making fun of the small wounds on his legs. On the bus, there's also a girl named Sixtina. The bullies mock her and burst into laughter at her name. Sixtina stands up to the boy who was being mistreated and snaps, What are you looking at? The boy looks at the bus driver and suddenly he's immersed in another memory, this time with his mother who's showing him a thick book about gods and narrating each page in great detail. In class, Sixtina introduces herself to the other students but some of them laugh at her. The teacher, however, defends her and says she has a really cool name. Sixtina doesn't like the people from the South because she thinks they're snobs. The teacher gets up and thanks Sixtina for her presentation, telling her to sit down. It seems that Rob is drawing a tiger, the same one he encountered in the forest earlier. Suddenly, the tiger in the sketch seems to move, which suggests that Rob might be autistic and having hallucinations. Rob remembers a moment with his mother, having breakfast in bed. In the memory, he asks his mother about something in a drawing that he doesn't understand. His mother helps him solve the riddle of the drawing. His father walks into the room and asks the mother not to move around too much in bed to avoid getting hurt. The teacher calls Rob and asks him to go to the principal's office. He gets up, gathers his belongings, and a bully trips him while the other kids laugh uproariously. He arrives at the principal's office, who asks him a few questions and expresses concern about his bruised legs. Rob assures the principal that he has been applying ointments. The principal suggests that it might be a good idea for Rob to stay at his shanty for a few days since his wound could be contagious. Rob likes the idea. The principal writes a note for Rob's father, hands the note to Rob to pass on to his father. They say goodbye and Rob leaves the principal's cluttered office. Rob tucks the note into his pocket and comes across a teacher pushing a cart similar to a waiter's trolley. Rob decides to lend a hand and picks up the papers she's dropped. The teacher asks his name and he answers, Robert. She compliments a drawing that Rob carries with him, praising his impressive talent. She asks if he has more doodles at home, but Rob replies that he can't show them because he has to stay home for a few days due to his leg injury. Rob sits on a bench fidgeting with his hands as the school kids start to leave. Suddenly, an annoyed girl leaves, throwing an apple at him that stains his shirt. Sixtina and the girl get into a fight, and the girl knocks Sixtina down. Rob intervenes, asking the girls who were bothering Sixtina to leave her alone. The girls approach him menacingly, asking who he thinks he's talking to. Not wanting to get into trouble, Rob bolts, his drawing in hand. Rob manages to dodge his peers who are chasing him, and the bell rings, indicating that everyone must leave. Sixtina gets on the bus and everyone bursts into laughter. With her head down, she moves to sit next to Rob, telling him there are no other free seats and it's not like she wants to sit with him. Rob tells her it's cool. Sixtina wants to give him some advice. She advises him not to run away because that's what the others want. Very upset and with a grumpy attitude, Sixtina says that she hates the place and doesn't want to be there. She angrily adds that no one in school knows what the Sistine Chapel is. Rob responds that he does know. Rob starts talking about the Sistine Chapel, mentioning the paintings on the ceiling and the frescoes that leave you amazed. He mentions that he can't keep going to school for a few days due to a problem with his legs. Rob tells Sixtina that the principal thinks what he has on his legs could be contagious. Sixtina looks at him and puts her hand on his leg, hoping that Rob's wound won't be contagious to her as well. She continues to be worried, but he assures her, it's not contagious, this is just how I am. Sixtina asks where Rob lives, and he replies that he lives in a shabby hotel called Fifth Star nearby. Surprised, Sixtina asks if it's a hotel to which Rob confirms it is, but it's temporary, like a house but only for a while. 
Sixtina offers to bring him homework to the hotel. Rob falls silent, contemplating. Rob's father says that his leg condition is not contagious and asks if he wants to stay home for a while. Rob asks if he could get a job, but the father doesn't respond. Instead, he asks Rob to bring his ointment for the wounds on his legs while he prepares food. The father mentions that one day they will have a decent kitchen and then he can cook him good meals. If you're enjoying the video, please hit the like button. It only takes a second and helps me out a ton. Rob remembers a moment with his mother when she shows him a figure that he thinks is a butterfly, but his mother tells him it's not. Instead, she suggests he make a fish since the figure has that shape. Rob, with his unique way of seeing the world, imagines that the figure he's created is talking to him, saying, let me go. After this, Rob leaves the figure and goes to sleep. He turns off the lamp and closes his eyes. He hears thunder that bothers him a little, but he finally manages to fall asleep. He enters a dream where he sees himself in the forest, where he was at the beginning of the story, with a reflected light and fog. Roble walks through the forest, wondering where he is and what this place is. He sees Sixtina riding a tiger while it runs. The cleaning lady asks him why he is not at school, but he does not want to tell her the reason and simply replies, I don't know. The lady insists on asking him why he is not at school and warns him that he could end up cleaning houses. The cleaning lady gives Roba candy and asks about the wounds on his leg. She tells him that he can heal and that there is no need to go to the doctor. The woman suggests that the wound is due to sadness and advises Rob not to be sad and not to let sadness reach his heart. Rob tells her that his principal thinks his wound is contagious, but the lady assures him that the man has no idea. Later, the lady tells him that she has to continue cleaning. Rob is trying to uproot some plants when his school bus passes by. The bullies throw a hard ball at his hip, causing him pain. Out of nowhere, Rob imagines that tigers are chasing the bullies. Sixtina gets off the bus and the bullies tease him, saying, There's your girlfriend, where have you been? Christina has brought Rob his homework, which he thanks her for. At that moment, Rob looks at the sun and imagines the voice of the tiger's roar. He tells Sixtina that they should go quickly because he knows where there is a tiger. Show me the place, says Christina, eager to see the tiger. As they walk together, Christina does not stop complaining about the situation they are in. Where is your mother? Christina asks again. Rob, trying to avoid the topic, warns her that there is a tiger nearby and they must remain silent. However, Sixtina insists on knowing more about Rob's mother. The boy cautiously approaches a metal cabin. Rob warns Sixtina not to get too close because the tiger might not like it. Sixtina says it's like the tiger poem that says, Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. Sixtina is fascinated by the tiger, but then she gets angry because she can't stand to see the tiger locked up and tells Rob that they should set it free. However, Robley is scared and tells her they can't. At that moment, they hear the noise of a car approaching and they both start running. Sixtina's mother catches them together and scolds Rob for being there. Despite Christina's protests, her mother insists they leave. Rob is left alone, immersed in his thoughts while a romantic music plays in the background. Suddenly, a memory of his mother Caroline at Christmas comes to his mind. They were putting up lights on the tree, happy as can be. Robley snaps out of his daydream and finds himself folding sheets next to the cleaning lady. While they work, they have a chat, and Robley asks her some questions. Then Rob starts sweeping in the street and sees two men coming out of a store in the middle of an argument. The argument ends and one of the men walks away. He asks Rob why he isn't in school and Rob responds that he's sick. The man offers him a job to earn extra money and asks if he likes animals. He then tells him that he has a wild and tries to intimidate him. The man gives Rob directions to where the animal is and asks Robley to get in his car. Although he initially resists because he has to keep sweeping, Rob finally agrees and gets in the car. The man takes Rob to the forest where the tiger is. He warns Rob to keep an eye out and they both get out of the car. The man asks Rob to close his eyes but then assures him that he will recognize the tiger when he sees it. Suddenly Rob realizes that the tiger is real and wild. The man awes the boy with his words about the feline. The tiger lunges at the cage as if it were going to attack the man, but it stops at the last moment giving him a good scare. 
The man explains to Rob that the tiger needs to eat meat twice a day and tells him about its diet. He offers to pay him two bucks a day if he takes on feeding the tiger with meat regularly. The man hands Rob some keys and tells him how to open the tiger's cage door, warning him not to even think about using the other two keys. He shows him how to feed the tiger and throws a piece of meat to the... The tiger tries to attack again, and the man throws himself to the ground to dodge it. He tells the tiger that Rob will be its new caretaker. Rob arrives home, hides the meat under the bed, and washes his hands. Later, Rob meets Sixtina, and they both return to see the tiger. Rob warns Sixtina to be watchful and tells her about how the tiger lunged at the man. Even though Rob thinks that the tiger might not be hungry, Sixtina reminds him that it's a dangerous, wild. Sixtina gets sad when she sees the tiger locked up and wants to let it go despite Rob's concerns. She removes the blanket from the cage so that the tiger can see the stars. By nightfall, Sixtina and Roble sit together, watching the stars while the tiger keeps an eye on them. The stars seem relaxing, and surprisingly, they also seem to calm the tiger down, who lets out a relaxing roar. Even though the two kids feel a strong friendship, they are still concerned about the tiger's well-being and their desire to set it free. Rob and Sixtina chat about the stars when a question arises about who would win in an imaginary fight, and the answer is a tiger, they both agree. Meanwhile, Sixtina is thinking about her mother, who was angry. Suddenly, the cleaning lady catches Sixtina and Rob, giving them a scare. Roble introduces Sixtina to the cleaning lady, and Sixtina asks her a very childish question. The cleaning lady patiently offers Sixtina a candy, who initially looks displeased, but ends up accepting it. Before leaving, the cleaning lady gives Sixtina some advice. No one is going to come save you, you have to save yourself. Sixtina dwells on the advice and decides not to just stand by. Later, Rob enters the house and finds his father eyeing a bag of meat that Rob had hidden under the bed. His father asks him if this is Sixtina's doing and why he has the meat. Rob explains that it's meat from Villan, but his father gets suspicious because Villan barely pays them enough. His father believes the meat is spoiled and is worried about the situation. A memory of Rob and his mother pops into his mind, showing how much they loved each other and how the family's economic situation was not good, since they lived in a hotel. Sixtina also wants to tell the cleaning lady about the tiger. Robbie tries to dissuade her, but Sixtina pays him no mind. The cleaning lady gets quite a fright when she finds out there's a tiger around and asks, who was the fool that locked it in a cage? Very angry, she says it's not right to have a caged tiger, but although the cleaning lady agrees, she is also afraid to release it due to its wild nature. Rob opens the tiger's cage and, to their surprise, the tiger does not lunge at them. Robbie and Sixtina step away from the door and encourage the tiger to come out. Eventually, the tiger leaves the cage and walks as free as the wind. Suddenly, Sixtina falls to the ground. Rob's father has shot the tiger and Sixtina cries for the dead tiger, thinking it didn't deserve to be locked up or die like this. Rob confronts his father, but the old man reminds him that they only have each other. Although Rob is upset, he's not going to hate his father forever. The cleaning lady tries to comfort the kids. Rob finds a drawing of the tiger in his notebook and shows it to Sixtina, who praises it. Sixtina gives Rob a kiss on the lips, leaving him speechless. The voice of Rob's mother, Caroline, can be heard talking about the tiger. Rob thinks about his mother's death and how, like the tiger, she also went to a better place. Despite the sadness of the situation, there is some comfort in knowing that the tiger no longer suffers. But the adventure doesn't end here. I'll see you in the next one. Let's go.